How are you legends? Welcome back to the long-awaited update to, to me painting Warhammer. So I made a video on Warhammer about a year ago, documenting the process of from going from my first miniature to, you know, a year later and what I could paint and the difference. This video is going to be documenting from the last miniature I painted, which I think was the giant Tau Storm Surge, if I remember correctly, to, you know, what another year in the hobby looks like and just how bad an addiction could really get. So sit back and relax as I show you all of the minis I've been painting. I don't know, grab your popcorn and enjoy. Once I finished that Storm Surge, I was pretty confident with uh, my skills at painting the town, or at least in this kind of color scheme. The white being, you know, something that's really hard to kind of pull off well. But since I had an airbrush and I was getting used to like the new enamel washes and not Games Workshop's Acurex Shade and all those that basically stain everything as soon as they touch it. So from there, I was like, okay, right, let's make an army. Because all I had was a giant storm surge. And you can't really make an army with that. So one thing that Tau had a lot in 8th edition, which is when I made this, was drones. And because I painted a few of them already, I was like, well, this is super easy and I've bought loads of, uh, like, Tau at the moment. I didn't even know. I just made all of them. I had, like, shield drones, gun drones, mark drones, all the kind of drones you could think of. Um, and then I also wanted to start with troops, because you actually need troops to make an army list. I wanted to make, uh, I think the Fire Warriors. Basically just the pew pew guns. Regular foot soldiers that if you're actually making a Tau army, don't normally do anything. You try to avoid bringing them if you can. So, yeah, I made those. They turned out really good as well. But the tactic I'd seen a lot of people use uh, in Warhammer, with the Tau especially, was to put all your troops in a Devilfish and march that up the board because it's super cheap, it has a pretty high toughness, and, you know, worst case scenario, it dies and then you might lose one Fire Warrior, but at least they're up and you can get objectives. So, I thought, let's make a Devilfish! So start with painting that. That turned out really good, I think. Uh, at one point, it was really clean before I put all of the, the weathering on and stuff. And I don't know whether I prefer it with the weathering or not weathering. Both look really good, but, you know, I was going for the, the sort of war-torn look. It's got a story to tell. Either way, I was pretty happy with how that turned out. And then, it was about time to start on some elites, I think they are. And I think these were the stealth suits. Uh, so I made a whole batch of those things. Um, I think I only made two with the fusion blaster or whatever it is, and the rest were just with the Gatling gun kind of things, whatever you want to call them. I tried to mimic light glowing on their faces. I probably could have done a lot better with it, but at the time I was like, yeah, this looks okay. And I was pretty happy with that. And then I needed some HQs. And one of the best ones to do when you're bringing fire warriors is to bring a cadre fire blade. And this is like, like a dude who basically just makes your dudes shoot an extra shot. And that's basically what I want. I mean, Tower good at gun lines, right? So I like the idea of marching up loads of those fire warriors and just shooting loads and having the cadre fire blade or cadre fire blade there made more sense. I was like, oh, that's going to be so cool. They're going to do loads of shots. So I was wanting to do something a bit different from the actual model that the cadre fire blade comes as, uh, as well as an ethereal, which is like a mind control thing, whatever. But I wanted them both to look a bit different to how they actually come in the box. So now that I was pretty far into this Warhammer malarkey, I went online and found, uh, I think it was either Etsy or some other third party shop online. Um, and I got like a different head for them. So I made a female ethereal. I think it was a different burst and a different head. And for the Codric Fireblade, I just gave him like a regular Fire Warrior head and then made him hold up like an actual sword because I think the other one just holds up something that's already seethed or whatever you want to call it. It's basically like a sword in a holster, which doesn't look as cool as a samurai sword. So and we made those. And then there was the heavy support slot, I think it was at the time. Uh, and I decided to make a broadside because right then, broadsides were amazing with just putting a shed ton of missiles on them. So I think it was just like two lots of homing missile things and then rocket lord. I don't know. It was a lot of missiles. And that one didn't turn out too bad as well. I think that was the first time that I actually put um, it on like a cork base to paint and then it was on to the inaugural battle. Uh, and instead of doing like a legit one, we had another friend who wanted to play with us. So, I don't know, we just made like a free for all, <laughs> which didn't really turn out too great. It lasted forever because one of us didn't know the rules. And to be honest, all of us didn't really know the rules very well. But it was like uh, Blood Angels against um, Death Guard, and then I was Tau. And basically, I just stayed in my side try to shoot things, uh, things eventually came to me, and at one point I think I was literally left 
with just the storm surge and some drones trying to really protect it <laughs> from being whacked too hard by an axe. You know, when you spend ages painting all these things and then they just instantly die, it's like, oh, sweet, cool. <gasps> so what I did next was basically scrap the storm surge because I realized it was actually rubbish. So uh, that's a lot of points that I could have saved and found out that the uh, crisis suits, which are these little nimble things that you can really switch out the loadouts uh, to, were really good. So I started making a bunch of those, um, but I wanted to make them a bit different. So I went online, and I think it was Deadly Print Studios, where I found loads of extra stuff that you can put on them. So instead of just having missiles that look like they hadn't launched or anything, they had them part way shooting. So they had the, the smoke stream coming from the back of them. I thought that was such a really cool idea that just really uh, breathed an extra little bit of life into these miniatures. Uh, and making that, like painting those, wasn't it wasn't too hard. It was just a bunch of like wet blending and maybe some dry brushing. And not only did I want to breathe more story into the, the models, but I wanted to bring more story into the Tau itself because in the narrative or in the lore, they sort of bring loads of other races under one wing for the greater good. There has been instances in the past where human worlds have turned to the Tau. And I thought, well, better thing to do than having fire warriors you know instead of having all the fire warriors as you know the tau sep whatever how about have them as humans they have a special name uh, i can't remember what it's called now so what i did was i bought some astro militarum and uh, i think i found like a youtube tutorial basically decapitate the astro militarum troops scrape off the aquila and then stick on like a fire warrior head onto the back of it and the rest i think with the boots you had to chop a little bit of and the hands as well because otherwise they only have three fingers instead of four you all those sort of alien nonsense fish people yeah horse whatever god knows and another thing my friend who got me into warhammer thank you uh, mcclure um he had been you know he's been collecting warhammer for ages and he had fantasy models of course my channel's all about dinosaurs and stuff and i was thinking you know how about different races what about so they found like a lizard men planet or something like that um so instead of having more tau or more humans i decided to convert uh, these lizard men into tau seps one of the tutorials that i had seen from goober town hobbies who's another youtuber who does a lot of painting tutorials like secret to making the perfect yellow which is basically undercoating um or a white to pink and then a purple and then once you get this certain ink to spray over the top it's like an orangey yellow but because inks are very opaque it'll show what's underneath and for some odd reason pink and yellow have a really good synergy now i was still having some teething issues because uh once i started painting over the top of it um i realized that the ink would just rub away so then i would need to spray a layer of gloss over the top of the ink to protect it and then i could paint over the top of that and put the wash on uh but yeah it took it took a few tries and some of them have like some pink showing through because I was still learning. But they, I, I was pretty happy with those. I was starting to get like a Tau army that had some humans, some lizard men, some actual Tau. Um, and I was pretty happy with the way it was coming together. And then I had another match against Death God and he brought Mortarium and I died like really quick. <laughs> there was like literally nothing I could do. I think I'd made another devil fish as well. And I'd, I'd painted like the tower uh, numbers on the side of it to say 72. Because my friend has a fear of the, the number 72. Uh, but that didn't help. Uh, Motarium pretty much tore through everything. He went from one squad to the, another squad and then destroyed that vehicle. And yeah, it was just not a good time. And at this point, I was feeling pretty defeated. I, you know, had spent so much time painting all this Tau to have them lose twice and pretty badly at that. So it was at this point that I decided I'm actually going to study Warhammer and find like good techniques and stuff. Because I've always been a fan of RTS games and strategies and stuff. But for some other reason, everything I was doing was rubbish. Probably because I was spending more time painting than I was strategizing. So I decided to turn back to the only army that I had the most units of and the most knowledge of, and that was Necrons. And at this point, a ninth edition had dropped, and Necrons, apart from Space Marines, were the only new armies to get codexes, which basically meant that everything else you were playing up against was using their old rules, which didn't include a lot of cool stuff. At that point, I was like, right, let's do Necrons um, and bring back the Nightbringer, the, the cool model with the scythe and everything. So we had one battle with that. Um, I also brought like two Doomstalker things. I didn't manage to get them painted for the day. But you know, they stood there and they tried to shoot things. They didn't do it very well. In fact, they were very swingy and I don't think they killed anything. But the friggin' Nightbringer... Oh my god, he was amazing. He managed to, like, fly all the way across the map, uh, destroy a whole Plague Marine squad, which was very surprising for my friend, and managed to survive with, like, one health on it or something like that. 
And I actually managed to win my first ever game. Uh, so to celebrate the occasion, which I was super excited about, I decided to repaint my Catan Nightbringer model. But this time, I wanted to spend a little bit more time and effort with it, and I, you know, apply some of the more new, nuanced painting techniques that I'd learned. And because it killed a lot of things, I thought, let's bring it to life. So it was all green. And it's at this point that me and McClure decided to start going to the Warhammer shop to play, you know, every week. And to do this, I would kind of need to have magnets on my things. So I... <laughs> So I started the painstaking process of putting magnets on literally everything I had. This included the destroyers, which had plastic bases, so I couldn't even put the regular ones on them. I just had to get some magnetic uh, stuff and cut around it with a craft knife. And it's at this point I decided to revisit some of the models that I had made in the Indomitus box. Now, I hadn't finished painting these. One of the units was the Scorpec destroyers, and oh my god, these things were so OP. There's three different types you can get, two of them in the same, and one has a giant like blade that can cut through anything. I think I put like one squad in a battle or something like that and they were just so good. So I decided to, um, I, I, I don't even know, I think I've got 12 of them now. I have so many Scorpix destroyers because they're just so good. Because if you put three then by the time you get to the enemy there's not going to really be many of them left. If you put a squad of six in, I normally find that they can get up to the enemy and do some slicing. Well, you know, of course the reanimation protocols means that some of them might come back. I sort of copied the box art for the reap blades and stuff they had. But for one of the sets, I decided to do something a little bit different. I think I cut up the arms a little bit to give them a little bit of different poses because they look monotonous when there's 12 of them. And because there's only three different model variants, you're going to have four of each of the same type, which is bad looking on the tabletop. So I had one that had its head, like its blade above its head and stuff. And I also wanted to give the illusion that they were almost strobing, like these weapons weren't just always glowing the same sort of color and shape. I also revisited the Overlord that came with it with the Tachyon Arrow. Uh, and gave his blade like a cool little look to it. The Plasmancer that also came with it, I wanted to give his gem a little bit of a different look rather than everything being green. And of course, the Scorpec Destroyer Lord, or Scorpec Lord Destroyer, whatever you want to call it, that thing. Um, I've used him a couple of times. He seems very like a glass cannon, as most Scorpecs are, but if he can do some damage, he will. But uh, I was pretty happy with that. Instead of making his, like, rending claws just metal, I thought, well, why don't we just keep going with this hyperphase blade look? So I decided to do them the same too. Royal Warden, that's it. I couldn't remember this guy's name for the life of me. Um, here's a cool little technique where things can fall back and shoot. But I thought, you know what, he's a cheap HQ. Maybe I might need him in something. So I thought I'd paint him up as well. And because I was going back and looking at some other things that I hadn't really finished, Canoptic Sentinels. I think they're Canoptic Sentinels. I think there's two variants. They're pretty much the same. Just one has a gun or something. Decided to paint up the one that I liked the pose of the most. <laughs> because these things took forever. It took so long to sort of do the, the blending onto the black to the green for the shell of the carapace. And then to do a highlight on that. And oh, it took so long. But finally, even for the legs... But I did it, and it didn't look too bad, and I actually managed to use it in a battle. It did a pretty good damage to something. I think it actually managed to survive and win me the game. Oh yeah, also, I was actually winning a lot of the games that I was having at Warhammer, um, and I don't know why that was. I think it was just because I think Necrons are pretty good. A lot of armies were slowly rolling out their codexes at this point, so they were getting better. And I also uh, finally painted uh, and made, I should say, the Canoptic Spider, which in the new edition allowed you to, like, spawn things, and it had this cool, like, ability and stuff. However, but every time I've used it in a battle, because it's such a big target and the people know that it can just make more scarabs, they blow it up instantly. And I can't blame them, but it does mean that made this really nice thing that lasts on the tabletop for two seconds. It looks really good on the first round. <laughs> and because I was so in love with the Scorpic Destroyers, I just wanted to make a whole destroyer army because I had the Locust Destroyers, I had the Scorpic Destroyers, but there was one destroyer that I was kind of missing, and that was the Ophidian Destroyers. And the reason why I had so many Scorpic destroyers was because me and my friends had split three Indomitus boxes. Two of them were wanting space marines, so I had three boxes worth of Scorpic destroyers. However, the Ophidian destroyers are in their own separate box, and basically each one costs a tenner, which actually, if I compare it to how much money I've spent on Jurassic World Alive, is nothing. Uh, so I don't know why I even put up so much of a fight, but this is before I did all that with Jurassic World Alive. Anyway, so I thought I'd buy one box and sort of paint them up, and with two of them, I accidentally left out part of their spine. So I've got two midget ones and really <laughs> one really tall one. If only I had forgotten the third one. <laughs> and then I decided to go back and kind of sort of fix up the two Canoptic Doomstalkers when I'd 
first painted them, they weren't really done at all. But then this time I'd sort of, you know, had more fun with doing the uh, the green. I'd sort of learned how to do the white and then sort of do the Tesseract glow and then some other sort of wash on top of it to really give a deeper sort of, I don't know, realistic look to the glows. Um, I think I almost finished one, um, but then the other one I just left white uh, because I didn't have enough time to do it for the battle. But, you know, they, they were getting closer. And then I decided to just try something completely new, you know, not go back to something and finish the pile of shame, which I probably should have done. But we decided to start on a really cool project, or at least one that I thought was really cool, which is the Catan Shard of the Void Dragon. Uh, this is really complicated looking because there's a lot of, like, fiddly, spindly parts, and it was a bit of a bother to put together. But in the end, it turned out really good, and on its inaugural, like, debut, when I, uh, what did I do? I had a game against Death Guard, um, it killed two of the bloat drones straight away, because it's basically designed to kill vehicles, <laughs> it was in its first turn, it killed two of them, and the guy was like, oh, that's, something's wrong here, shouldn't have been able to do that, but if it's any consolation to him, he ended up winning the match because he had Death Shroud Terminators, that's it, and stupidly enough, I decided to turn around with some Necron Warriors and shoot at them, and I, then I died, I should have just kept on running, but you know, you learn that I know now no longer to go towards Death Shroud with anything, <laughs> so at this point, I was not buying anything new, I was like, okay, I've got as much as I want, and I'm good, I've got loads still in that whole box of shame that I bought ages ago. And one of the things I'd bought loads of was the box sets for the Praetorians and the Lich God. However, I've never used Lich God. And apparently they're supposed to be really good, or at least they were in 8th. They were like an auto-include because they're shields and bodyguards and stuff. So I decided to make some of them. Um, I think one of them didn't have a head. I think it fell off because I did it with glue instead of actual uh, plastic cement. Uh, but again with this, I wanted their shields to sort of have a glow. Like, not everything is uniform. I think the swords I was pretty happy with. I was like, they can be all the same. But I wanted the, the shield to look different. So this is where I was really just messing about, putting on the color in different locations on the shield, and then just worrying about the wet blending later. So what I realized after doing battles with friends and people at the Warhammer workshop was that I didn't have anything that was anti-tank. I mean, I had the two giant Doomstalkers. They were too swingy, and the, even if you did hit anything, there's a chance you would get a one instead of a six. So it's like, you're gonna do nothing even if you do hit. But what I realized was there's the new heavy uh, Locust Destroyer, and if you put it with the new gun, it has has like one shot and it's like a 3d3 which is max nine damage which is gonna do a lot of damage to a tank and I made three of those because I could put them in a squad of three or I could just attach them on to a regular locust destroyer squad and these things became like something I'd always take like you you could you have to take at least one or two just to make sure that you've got something to take on like a big dreadnought or a tank from something else so Tau and Tyranids at this point were very low on my like to play or even paint list uh, but I've been playing a lot of Necrons, and my friend who has got Death Guard, I've been playing a lot against. And it always felt like Death Guard was super hard to shift or do anything with. Kind of wanted to start an army of Death Guard, but at the same time, I didn't want to spend loads of time painting. I just wanted to have something that was quick and easy. And this is where I discovered this technical thing called Rust. Um, I, th I don't know who it's by, but basically I'd seen some videos on Instagram and YouTube pop up where you basically just paint this thing on, and it just gives this really good look. Like, I, like something that, you know, you have to take layers and you know, time to make. And I thought to myself, why don't I just have a whole army of Death Guard? So I bought some of the uh, the heroes. I think they're like little mystery boxes and they give you one like Space Marine each. And I put the rust on and it looked really good. And then I decided to just dry brush some metal on and that looked so good. I was so happy. I couldn't believe my look that I'd found something that was super quick. And I, I felt like I could churn out an army with this. I was so happy. Um, and then I decided, okay, let's Let's just do a little bit of a glow on the weapons. And that's when I realized that the rust is water soluble. It didn't even matter if I put a layer of varnish over the top of it. When I came to painting extra details on top, everything just turned into this horrible discolored mess. That was traumatic. So yeah, um, I ended up having to try to make realistic rust by myself. And at this point I was like, right, okay, sod it. I'm just gonna try one model. We're not gonna do batching methods. We're just gonna try one model and build it up. So I watched another tutorial. I think it was some orc buggies uh, this guy had and I just decided to put that onto a Death Guard vehicle. And actually, 
it, it turned out really good. It took a very long time and it's still not finished, but I was really happy with it. And instead of doing like a sort of fleshy skin tone, like purples or pinks for the bulges that come out of it, I thought, why not we have it like it's radioactive? The inspiration I used was Gears of War 3 when you had the Lambent and they were all glowy. I thought it would do the same for these guys. Then I decided, okay, right, if I can't do everything rusty, at least I'll do the vehicles rusty. And then I can do the regular Space Marines in a different color scheme. And this is where I decided to go for one of the most complicated paint schemes I think that is in the Warhammer universe, probably well for me anyway, which is the Death God Pallid Hand. Now most Death God are green and it can look really good, but they have another one called the Pallid Hand, which is like a creamy color. And I just love it. I love when it looks weathered and I see these amazing artists have made it look awesome. So I ended up following um, two thin coats guy, Duncan. Uh, he put like a tutorial on how to do Pallid Hand and I followed that to the T. I did a few bits where I, you know, I experimented a little bit and I tried it on one of the uh, Space Marines. But in the end, I was so happy with it. It was by far the most complicated mini I'd ever painted, but it looked really good and I was so happy. But by the end, a sod doing an army in that, man. Spending all the time painting everything I'd ever done so far and then doing another army in this paint scheme? Nah, I'm good. I'm just glad I at least tried it. So then I did another one. Uh, I painted one more Space Marine <laughs> because I just wanted to see if I could do it again and this time not following the tutorial and just remember like from memory and doing a little bit extra and then doing a little bit of a plasma gun. Probably should have done a different color than yellow on something that's primarily like a cream slash yellow color. But you know, you gotta, you gotta make these mistakes to learn from them. So just when I'm happy with the Necrons and I've experimented with Death Guard, Tyranids get their new 9th edition codex released and it is brutal. They are so good and it kind of gets me interested in Tyranids again. So what do you think we do? Do you think we go back and finish some of the models we do or do we build new models and you know paint them? Well actually what we do is we buy new models and then make a whole new paint scheme for them rendering my old paint scheme redundant. Yeah! So basically with this one, I took what I'd done with the lizard men and that pink tutorial about spraying, you know, uh, everything pink and then the underbelly a bit darker, the top lighter, and then spraying the ink over the top of it. Um, and I only ended up doing two models for this and I think it was one that I didn't have. So at least I can sort of mix and match if I do want to use my old models. And that was a Carnifex and I think it was the new Screamer Carnifex or something, which is basically loads of attack. And I thought it turned out really good as well as I think I did the Neurothrope, which is something, again, a model I didn't have. So, you know, at least I'm trying not to make more work for myself. Uh, they did a battle, another Tyranid guy, and he was really helpful. I think Tyranids was the only thing he ever played, so he helped me out with a lot of that stuff. Um, he won, which is fine, because I barely ever played Tyranids, and even with the new codex, um, but I did learn a lot, which I was more grateful for. I'd rather lose and learn than win and not know how I did it. And that takes us up to about March 2022 just before I moved to Japan. So the question is, what army did I bring with me to Japan? And the answer is none. I didn't bring any of them. They're all in storage. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough room to bring them with me. And even then I was like, well, how am I gonna play it and, and transport and everything? Really logistics weren't the issue. It was just, I just didn't have the space for it. Otherwise I probably would have taken my 12 Scorpic destroyers and just a regular sort of 2000 army. With them in, it would have been easy. I mean, I still have a passion for Warhammer, but at the moment I'm just now, instead of filling my spare time with painting Warhammer, it's just other things. So my passion is still there. I just haven't played in a while. But you know, it is what it is. Sometimes life gets in the way and sometimes you've got to take opportunities. The amazing thing about Warhammer is that I will have these minis uh, for as long as they're still in one piece. I'll, I'll probably be dead and these minis will still exist, uh, which is a lot more than I can say about micro transactions in uh, app games, which is horrendous. But anyway, guys, that is now a two-year journey of painting Warhammer, going from Dark Souls, the board game, all the way up to like making almost four armies, painting something, putting a wash on, and that being it, to now, you know, using inks, airbrushes, enamel paints and washes. It's so diverse and challenging. There's so many different models to paint. There's so many different things to try. I honestly love the hobby and I can't wait to, you know, eventually get back to it. So if you've enjoyed this video, guys, hope you've enjoyed this update. I know you've waited long enough for it and I keep seeing comments every now and again about it, but hopefully I've filled you in. And until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Oh, bye-bye.